Hi everybody, Christina here with Christina Store Photography. Welcome to Photo Tips Tuesday. I'm here with one of my students, Sandy Wilson. Hi. <laughs> and I just finished a headshot session. And Sandy is somebody who has taken my group classes and wanted to get a little bit more in depth with her skills. And she had felt like she had reached a plateau. It had been, what, a year, two? No, gosh, oh, three, three years. years. Three years Two, ago we started. Yes, three years ago we started. So it had been about three years that she had been working on her own after our lessons and approached me and said, you know, I feel like I've, I've been at a plateau and I really want to expand and I feel like I'm, I'm ready to level up. So we've been doing some private lessons for about a month. Yes. And you've already evolved. And just once a week in a month, you have, we're starting our second month now, that mm -hmm. have really, really grown already because I can tailor those lessons to her and her specific needs and where she is right now so that I can give her specific lessons. So today I had a headshot session with a client and Sandy's really interested in portraits and lighting and feels like that's an area that she needed a little bit more instruction on. So we, had, we just had a good time, right? My client was very comfortable. We did a little bit of an extended headshot session. She wanted some marketing materials her website and various things and, and lectures she does. So tell me about your experience today. What were some things that you learned or, or observed in what we did today? Well, um, I observed on a lot of the positioning of the client, um, your, your chin up or your chin down, the tilting of the head, the differences that that all makes. Um, the expressions and making making the client feel very comfortable. Um, I watched Christina bring the personality out in this woman, and um, she found she found the things that this woman really wanted to uh, uh, the things that this woman really felt comfortable with, and her smile went from kind of that fake type of a smile to this very natural and animated expression, and I love that. Um, I, I'm so interested in, in uh, the portraits. Um, I believe in making memories, and I love capturing moments like that. Um, so it, it was that and um, the positioning of the lights and moving them forward more in front of the client. Um, the hand movements, you know, um, crossing them, the positioning of the, the elbow, the shoulders forward or back, and um, not to take a picture straight on. That's kind of a tip. <laughs> yes, yeah. So um, it was just a fantastic afternoon. It was a couple of hours of, of learning, and it was fun. And I know there was a lot more that was in there, um, that's all I can think of right <laughs> off the top of my that's head. That's what matters. That's what you got. That's yeah. perfect. That's and, perfect. And I loved it. It was just phenomenal. So one of the things she brought up is how to get your client comfortable. And one of the ways I do that is perfect, is that I get them talking about mm -hmm. what they love, who they love. And sometimes, sometimes it doesn't always work. I started out the session asking her, I know I, we had had a previous conversation, I know her daughter just went off to college and she's an empty nester, she and her husband now are empty nesters. And when I first started talking about it, she, she kind of had the opposite effect. She really went in, she's a little sad, she misses her daughter, she's thinking, oh, she's away at school, what do I do, I miss her. So that brings her energy totally down, so I quickly changed the subject to, I don't even remember what it was, you know, where did you go to school? Where, what did she study? I didn't even bring talk about that. I talked about like how long you've been married. What, tell me about your job. You know, so I, I changed the subject a little bit. But then later, she brought up her daughter again, thinking how happy she is doing what her daughter loves, and she's enjoying studying, and she loves writing. So she bright, she really just lit up. So sometimes even the same topic can shift their energy in one way or the other. And in, in this session, it went both ways. So that is really one of the ways I help them get those natural expressions. And getting those natural expressions is really important. The subject warned me ahead of time that she really doesn't like having her picture taken, which so many of us, and you've experienced that too, who don't like to have their photo taken. 
So the, the easier you can make it for them and the more comfortable you can make them, the easier it's going to be, the better your pictures are going to be. Because you say when you get them relaxed and talking in, about something they love, they really lighten up, literally brighten up. And you get those natural expressions and laughs. And I call them out. I said numerous times, uh-oh, we got the fake smile going on, right? And that, what does that do? You're laughing right now. She started laughing. The client starts laughing. You call them out on what they're doing. Uh They're going to make some changes. And they'll laugh at themselves or they'll laugh at me when I do something. And that's fine because then I just get those good natural expressions. So sometimes it's not always about... For me, it's not always, it's not about at all just having the exact right position and their head in the right place and their hands in the right position because then they start looking super stiff. But you really want to have, I personally want to have a little bit more fluid, natural movements. So that's a really great point. What is a tip that you would recommend to maybe your level photographer or even newbie photographers? What's something that you really would that really help you elevate your photography skills? Are we talking about t- today? Your tip. No, 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 <laughs> just in general. Any tip? Um, I, would, I would say that my tip of the day would be be careful what's in your background. Um, Christina has brought it up a few times, and about a week ago, um, I had a young couple come to me and say, I need to have a picture for my... my um, uh, not engagement, but they just got married, so they were telling everybody that they had just announcement. got announcement. And um, I ended up taking a couple pictures, and we were kind of in this little tiny park, and it kind of looked like this lady had a twig coming out of her head. So had I been more aware of that, that picture would have been a lot better. So really being aware of, of what's in the background, keep it clean. Absolutely. Keeping your backgrounds clean can make or break your picture, like she just said. And stabbing people in the head or the heart or, you know, abnormal things growing out of their bodies that really shouldn't be there is really disconcerting for your viewer. Having a cleaner background really draws your subject, your, the attention to your subject. Whether it's a building or a bird, it doesn't have to be a person. We just like shooting people. <laughs> yeah. So it can be all kinds of different, whatever your subject matter is, being a very aware of your background and your surroundings around your subject matter can really help your viewer, lead your viewer through your image. So being very conscious of that, what you include is equally as important as what you exclude, I think. So backgrounds are really important. Mm-hmm. Angles, if you have that twig, you could, she could have just leaned down just a little bit or shifted over to the right or to the left. This is my right, this is their left. And that may have gotten rid of the twig grown mm-hmm. out of their head. So that just really takes practice in as you're shooting, even when you're shooting it, as you're shooting it, noticing, mm-hmm. oh, there's that twig or they moved and there's something new poking them mm-hmm. in, the, in the arm or the head. So that's a really excellent tip. And that's one that anybody can use whether you're more advanced like you are and using an SLR or you're shooting with your cell phone. That's something that you can always be conscious of. An easy way to clean up your background is to lift up your camera or your cell phone a little bit or you get lower so you get the sky or the ground as your background. So you can kind of clean that up. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Christina Stewart with Christina Stewart Photography and Sandy Wilson. Who doesn't have a business name yet? (laughs) I'll get one. (laughs) Thank you for joining us on Photo Tip Tuesday. I will see you next week. Bye. (laughs) Awesome. The beeper just went off.